name is Maria Sasha Khan. I'm a mentor for Youth Arts in Action, and this is the Inspiring Artist Series. Today I'm interviewing Ilan Eshgeli. He's a very well-known British neoclassical composer, and he's most well-known recently for his work on the films The Young Victoria, Stardust. Uh, he's collaborating right now with the European Space Agency, has recently done work for Burberry as well, and also composes for bands and has done such a wide variety of work that it will be hard to you know, put it all into one uh, synopsis. But I also had the pleasure of recently working and dancing to your amazing music in the new premiere of Narcissus and Echo with Sergei Polunin. So I wanted to share a little bit about this amazing artist with you. And I'd like to first start by asking you how you got involved in composing, especially you know, for film and um, classical compositions. Uh, well, it was, it was almost by accident, really. What I, what I really wanted to do was be a guitarist in a rock and roll band. Okay. And as a teenager, like, like most teenagers. And I, but more than that, I, I knew that I really wanted to work in the music industry. Mm -hmm not really having any sense of what that might entail. Um, and I got introduced to a composer called Ed Shermer, who was the protégé for a very famous composer called Michael Kamen. Okay. And, and that's when I was 19. So I started working for those guys, just literally being a tea boy, a runner, going and getting things, making tea. Mm -hmm. But but it was extraordinary because I, I went to college and to, to university and I'd spend my summer holidays in Abbey Road Studios with a giant orchestra. Oh, cool. Admittedly, I was just making tea or like <laughs> running a bit of score <laughs> but out. You're still around it. But uh, but and, and so and and those guys were film composers, mm -hmm. and and that's how I got my start in in the film music industry, which is which is where I I suppose my first professional commissions came from. Okay, and the recent premiere of Narcissus and Echo was the very first time you've composed for ballet, as I Correct. understand. Correct, yeah. And that, was that a very different experience than composing something that's going to be used for a film, or there were maybe some crossovers that you found? I, I think there's a, there's a lot of similarity because both things, especially with the story for Narcissus and Echo, it's a, it's a narrative story, mm -hmm. and film is all about narrative. Mm -hmm. And so in that respect, that's something that's really joined together my, my whole career. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I, I studied, I did a joint degree in music and English literature, okay. but because I was doing all this amazing work with these composers, the music side of it wasn't interesting, so I really focused almost entirely on on English literature, and, and oh. that's basically what I did my degree in. So, so narrative and storytelling is 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 something that I've got a, a deep understanding of, mm -hmm. and and it's something that's always interested me. One thing that I was very impressed with as a dancer and as an artist is that, you know, you work on something, and you really it takes so much work, I'm sure, to even just put you know two minutes of music. Uh, together, I'm assuming, because mm. to do two minutes of choreography and a two minute variation, the amount of work that goes into that is immense. And I remember I was so impressed because like throughout this whole process, of course, there's like a constant changing and the concept and exactly what's needed. And you were so willing to say, okay, I'll do that. Okay, fine. If we need to take that out, we need to do something new. And I was just amazed by that because um, don't you sort of have a tie and a connection to those pieces of music that you put in? How well, can you? Uh, well, absolutely. But I, I think that training probably comes from being a film composer because okay. when you're a film composer, you're, you're a work for hire. You're, you're essentially providing a service mm -hmm and you're in the service of somebody else's creative vision, mm -hmm. and that somebody else is the director. Mm -hmm. um, and so they will ask you to do things. And of course, you're the head of your department, uh, so, so you'll discuss it, and you won't do things that, that you don't think are right, mm -hmm. but it's a collaborative process. Like, if you were a costume designer on a movie, yeah. or even on a ballet, you would say, the, the, the person, the creative force behind, mm -hmm. the central creative force, that person will come to you mm -hmm. and say, I always thought it looked like this, it should be yeah. like that, and you'll do a design, and they'll say, that's great, but I don't like the gold buttons, or whatever it is. And so you work, you work with that. Um, 
So I guess that is how some of the best inventions have come into play and some of the most amazing creative collaborations. So it's Absolutely. a very good mindset to have. And it was very impressive to watch and to work with, and it was a, a great joy as well, the whole um, process. Well, it was a huge learning process for me, and, and of course... The, the ballet was my initial idea, and so... I wanted to ask you about that, and I was wondering if you'd share the story of how the concept came about, because, um, I mean, what a what a moment then to see that on stage as a finished sort of project and production. Um, so, tell us. I, well, I, I was always, ever since I was a child, fascinated in Greek mythology. Okay. So I've always known a lot about it, and then I was reading Ovid's Metamorphoses, mm -hmm. And I always, I always thought that that it would make an interesting story to tell through music or through dance, all of the metamorphoses stories because they're they're stories that are quite hard to tell in a literal way. Mm -hmm. They're very poetic. They're about they're about strange transformations of things from 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 the but from the biological to the to the non biological from from one physical state to another physical state. They're not easy to tell as 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 a theatrical performance. So so you, you know I I mean in, in terms of dialogue in traditional theatre. Mm -hmm. So I always thought well well music and and dance would be a great way to tell these stories. And I always particularly loved the story of Narcissus and Echo. I don't know why that love story stayed with me. Mm -hmm. And I I read that when I was I must have been in my very early twenties, and. Um, and I always had this idea to, to, to do it as a ballet. I, I'd seen a lot of ballet. My mum danced, not, not professionally, okay. but, but she danced ballet for many years and, um, and loved it. So, so that was always a part of my life. And, and I just thought that would be a great way to tell the, the, tell the story. But the, the right... You know, in life you have to sometimes wait for the right opportunities to present themselves yeah. to fulfil an idea. Yeah. Um, this happened to be a almost a 20 year wait until until I met Sergey mm -hmm. and um and and Sergey thought it was a great story and he made that possible. He told me a story during one of the orchestra rehearsals which I found very intriguing of how you were going through one of your old translations of the metamorphosis that you had from college and you found a piece of paper. Yeah, well, yeah. the book that I first read, read it in, which was one of the, the, the Penguin edition of, the, of, mm -hmm. of, of its Metamorphoses. And, uh, yeah, and I, I found... Because I went and I pulled, pulled that book out because I, I needed to reread it in order to start making this ballet happen and remind myself of it. And, yes, in there was a, a, an A4 piece of paper uh, with the, the, the scribbling out of how I thought the ballet might be structured... But on the back of that was uh, was the, the my classes and the things that I mm -hmm. needed to do. So I knew it was from that time. So what an incredible reminder, probably, to see like wow, you know, from my college time to now, to see that this is something that I wanted to do. And how did it feel to see it then, you know, for the premiere and sort of fully realized? It was. Well, I mean, it's complicated because there were so many concerns about every aspect of it yeah you know you you you're finally putting this idea in front of an audience and you're in a theater and it's exhilarating and it's amazing but you know for me i was focused on every aspect of the collaboration the yeah. the, the work we did with david le chapelle on the set and the costumes mm -hmm. and the choreography and the music and the performance of the musicians and mm -hmm. uh, all those things that i almost didn't even have time to to take in that this had been such a long journey. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's wonderful. What you know, what's really extraordinary is just this idea that you can think of something. Yeah. And and make it happen, and and not that many people have the opportunity to do that in life. And I'm very grateful that I've had that opportunity a few times. Certainly doing this ballet was, was one of the greatest ones where I just had an idea and suddenly there's all these wonderful dancers and you and an orchestra and a theatre and, and, and this enormous huge team of people and all these wonderful creative minds coming together to realise a dream that I had once 
and, and that's a really special thing and something I'm very grateful for. And a testament to keeping the dream alive, I think. <laughs> yeah, There's a for, lot of people that have ideas, sure. they don't necessarily, you know, uh, keep them and remember them. Well, so. yeah, you need a, a lot of uh, patience and a lot of energy. Yes, I'm, I'm sure. And I know yeah. you have a very beautiful new daughter as well. She's two now? She is one and a half. She's one and a half, okay. Well, I'm sure she's going to grow up to be very involved and very interested in the arts when she has such a, you know, amazing background behind her. And what's next for you? What is your next exciting... I'm working on a project uh, with the European Space Agency oh. and uh, some astronauts. Ballet to space. <laughs> yeah, but it was a, another just amazing story that uh, Tim Peake, the British astronaut, was a fan of my work and got in touch with me and asked me to, to do some music for a video that he was going to make of his time on the space station. Oh, how cool. Which is available... But we're now going forwards to, to do another project, which is, I'm afraid, still under wraps. It's a secret for now. Well, I can't wait till we can hear about it. So it's been a pleasure, and thank you so much. And uh, like I said, it was such a joy to dance to your music. And as a dancer, when, um, especially I've been very blessed to work with and dance, you know, many just amazing pieces. But um, when you have music like that, and to me that's always been a large part of it, is the music that drives you and that inspires you when you're on stage and gives you that um, impetus to put that expression into your movement. So it was just a great joy to perform to it and dance to it. And as I said, just so impressed by you know what you were able to express and bring and collaborate and bring it all together. So thank you for your amazing idea that well, you had 20 years ago. <laughs> Well, thank you. You're very kind, and I loved every moment of it. So I, I hope we get to do it again soon. I hope so too. So until next time, and um, so this has been our inspiring artist interview with Elon Eshkeli, and uh, I'm Maria Sasha Khan. Thank you very much. Bye.